Hello, 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 and welcome. If you are here, pop into the chat. Sam, you're welcome to chat or not. It's up to you, but I'll, okay. I'll woman the chat, you know. You guys know how we like it. Tell me where you are. I am in Stone Ridge, New York today. It's 50 degrees out, which it was six degrees like two days ago. It was crazy. Um, how about it, how, where you are, Sam? What's the weather like? What are you doing? Uh, we had a cold, cold week last week, uh, and now everyone's into the English spring of five degrees centigrade. <laughs> the English spring? We translate that for us dummies here in the States. What's what's the Fahrenheit of that, do you know? Uh, very cold still. Yeah, penguins are still walking around. <laughs> it's still very cold. Not worth it. That's uh, perfect. <laughs> and this tan, for those that can see me, is just natural. It's not from lying out in the garden. <laughs> Don't you love them, everybody? Don't you love them? All right, so we're going to wait for some people to pop in. We've got Vancouver. Um, what's what's the weather happening with you guys? Snow, Ankit, there. Ankit does the math for us. So five Celsius, Thank you, 41. Ankit. Very good. Very good. Well, that is spring, basically. Hello, Kristen. Lovely. Who else we got popping in from, from wherever? Let us know in the chat. Make sure your chat is turned on to, oh, Megan's got snow. Um, where are you, Megan? All panelists and attendees is what it should be on, folks. Okay, Kimberly. Hey, Virginia, what's going on? Oh, you guys are about to get cherry blossom season like soon, right? That's how I know. I just love the best thing about spring is it always comes, right, Sam? Like, doesn't matter that there's a global pandemic or who your president may or may not be, right? <laughs> spring comes. <laughs> Thank God. It does. <laughs> All right, Erie, Pennsylvania. Awesome. Cool. So we're going to get into, we'll just wait for a couple more minutes for people to, to pop in. Hello, Facebook, Facebookers joining us. Welcome, welcome. I can't see your chat, but um, we can. So we're going to do Lately Live. This is what we do once a month where we find an awesome guest. If you guys have a guest you want to recommend, like do it. And we try to talk about things all over. You know, sometimes we don't talk about marketing at all. Like with, we had Orlando Bowen on um, last time and he told us, this incredible story of racism and rejuvenation actually um, which i thought was appropriate and um you know sometimes we go deep so if you guys have a suggestion let us know if you have questions today do what you always do ask away and um you know yeah let's do it shall we sam indeed let's go indeed he's so lovely we love sam sam's our our friend um i'm gonna i'm gonna read his his bio and try to sound like i'm not reading are you guys ready this is tip number one by the way, we're, we're going to do tips and no-nos on podcast today, best practices. So I can tell you a no-no is don't, don't forget to pre-read the bio. It should never be the first time you read it right now, like I'm about to do. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason is, is because you'll trip over the words. Um, and you should be, by the way, you should be able to rewrite the bio enough so that it feels natural coming out of your mouth, right? And, and your guests should be okay with that, frankly, um, because, you know, there's a lot of big words and, and things like that. So I'm going to, you guys can all grade me right now. Here we go. Ready? Sam Sethi is an award-winning radio presenter. He's got a hundred thousand plus listeners and he's the host of europe's top tech podcast top tech podcast see there we go it's called sam talks technology Ten thousand plus subscribers there he also specializes in in-depth reviews and analysis of business and technological news he knows a lot about startup life um, everything from web 3.0 voice smart assistance ai internet of things diversity and inclusion augmented reality he's a renaissance man clearly he's also interviewed countless entrepreneurs from across the globe including me and launched the wildly successful global podcast festival at the start of covid last year which is how we met so like knocked that out of the park in spite of the craziness he was also recently named community radio's best newcomer of the year uh, at the community radio awards please welcome sam sethi hello thank you that was so i sound so impressive who wrote that <laughs> Right. I always feel the same way. I'm like, I don't know who they're talking about. <laughs> I know. I was, I was like, God, I want to meet that person. Who are you? <laughs> so so I did rewrite that, by the way. I took your LinkedIn bio and then mm -hmm. I twisted it around. Um, and we're just going to get into it, folks. OK, so so I because I wanted to really put your you know, I want to make sure people came that they knew that you're you know what the fuck you're talking about. Right. That's that was my point. Yeah. Um, and then I threw in a bunch of ad libs there. Um, cause I know things about you and I did it because I want people to feel, I want them to trust you from the, from the mm -hmm. outset here. Right. And to feel comfortable. 
Um, anything other than not trip up? Anything I could have done better? Should have been shorter? No, I mean, uh, I'll add three stupid points to it. So that, that wasn't in there. One was I started TechCrunch Europe. Two, right. <clears throat> two I'm launching a radio station in two weeks' time. A um, real one? A real one, uh, yes, proper proper radio station. And why? God knows, and we'll talk about why I think radio might be dying. So why am I starting a radio station? And three, for those who would love to know more about podcasting at the end of this, I do a great podcast with a friend of mine, James Cridland, who knows everything about everything. It's called Podland, and it's a podcast about podcasting companies, not podcasting itself. So... Uh, and James's daily podcast, podnews.net, is just a must-read for anyone in podcasting. So James and I spend uh, every Thursday analysing the week's news. So, yeah, so that's the only other little bits I do as well. So there's a note to self, like you should probably send the bio off to people before you read it or publish it. Um, you know, I the reason I don't, by the way, is because sometimes people will rewrite it and then I'll... I'll, not because not with you specifically, but then I'll trip over the words. So like I'm one of those those people that just bulldozes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's a best practice, but like, <laughs> you know, but you should be able to go with the punches. Right. So you just do what Sam does. You say, oh, yeah, that's awesome. And here's three more things that I want to add to it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Be so we've validated you <laughs> if anybody needed that. I had a blue um, tick. Great. <laughs> so let's talk about um, the art of podcasting and radio. I'm going to meld them together as sort of the same thing here, even though they're, they're probably not really, but can, can we? Depends what show you're doing. Yeah, it depends what show you're doing. And look, I'm talking to the queen of radio, so it, it's very difficult for me to talk about radio when my little radio station audience is 100,000, yours was 20 million. Let's get numbers in perspective, right? <laughs> So uh, who's interviewing who here? I have no idea, but uh, you can start off. You can start off with radio. Go on then. Well, no, but music, music radio, though, is different than talk, talk radio. I mean, that's, yes. that's um, right. Clubhouse. Uh, and well, I, I mean, they're all melding, right? Audio, audio, if you want to put it in the generic and if you want to include Clubhouse podcasting and radio in that same pot. Then realistically, what I say is the difference between podcasting and radio is interactivity, right? Um, mm. If you did a music show and it goes out at eight o'clock every Wednesday night, that's great. That may be a habit thing that you want to listen to, right? But equally, it could be on demand because if there's no interactivity from the actual audience, then what's the difference? Right. Whereas you've got a chat show, you, you want to say, dial in, text me, call me, right? And that interactivity is where it has to be live and it has to be at that moment in time. And then Clubhouse sort of has that interactivity. Uh, it just doesn't have the on-demand element. So on-demand podcasting is, you know, um, I, one of the things I always say to every podcaster, make sure you drop your podcast at the same time every week mm -hmm. because podcasting and radio are habits. Um, mm -hmm. And if the habit is broken because you haven't dropped a podcast or you haven't produced your show then well that person's still walking the dog going to work doing whatever they're doing and they've got to fill that time with somebody else and guess what they might find another podcast or another radio station or another thing to do uh, and you then become out of sight out of mind and is that too um i remember reading like the consistency just like in general marketing is there's a trust factor there as well right absolutely yeah 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 and you know the, the audience is a, well, we're all just a click away. I mean, this has been marketing 101. You are just a click away, whether it's your website or a podcast. People, it'll take you forever to get someone to you and it can take them a second to leave you. So yeah. don't don't let them have an excuse to leave you. Like love. <laughs> true, it is very true. Yes. So... It's one to fall in love and a second to fall out. <laughs> Valentine's on the mind. Um, okay, so let's talk about, let's do, so there was a great tip there. So always start, you know, publish at the same time, basically, or always be at the same, be podcasting, go, going live at the same time. Um, what about a no-no? Can you think of one that's like, you see people do a lot, they should maybe stop doing? 
uh, one of the no-nos for me is people not editing their podcast. I think that's the lazy thing to do. Um, let me try and give you an example. There's a lot of people I know who will put a podcast straight out. You know, they'll do a half hour, 45 minute podcast and just chuck this thing out the front door. Uh, what, what was the point of doing that? You know, you might as well just had a live session, broadcast it and then said, forget about it. Editing, I think, is a criticality. I, I hate the ums and ahs, the you knows, the likes, uh, the big pauses, the you know, all of that stuff. Look, the way I see podcasting and radio is it, it's the closest thing to having sex with someone without being having sex, right? Because <laughs> you're fundamentally in someone's head. You are in their ears right. and it's by permission. And that is pretty an intimate space that you've got into. And if you're wasting someone's time, by you know making the podcast what I call flabby or or you're not actually giving them you know the meat of this story because look in live we can ramble we can we can go off on tangents right but actually when I compress my podcast back down I want it to be you know a bit of information timely it's got to be useful to that person because then they feel that hey you know I really got something out of that time mm. um, it's, it's a bit like Shakespeare you know uh, I, I am, therefore, you know, it, it, you can't just say because I am, therefore I am. You know, right, right. you've got to entertain, you've got to inform, you've got to educate, you've got to engage, you've got to do those things. And as I said, it's by permission. Someone's giving you that personal intimacy to be in their ears for the time that you've been allowed. Don't waste it. Don't don't make it flabby and they go, oh, you know, the podcasts I hate most are the ones where, hey, how are you? What's your <laughs> holiday? Where's the weather? Hey, it's great. You know, really, I don't give a shit what you're doing. I really don't, because that's, you know, I'll just fast forward it. Um, Get on with it, and if you, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, that nicety, have it off air. Do the off air stuff, right? Get that through and then hit the ground running. Anyway, that's just me. Other people yeah. may like that human element. I'm not that bothered. No, I think that's a really good, um, very simple differentiator is that a podcast should, should be a little more polished, let's just say, right? You know? Um, mm. So what, if, if you still though want to give, so there's a magic about being live. I've heard you talk about this before actually, um, which of course there is. When I think when you can get um, that magic in after the editing, like, so what's the tip, what's the tip of like still keeping it in there without removing, getting too stale, you know, getting too, um, what am I trying to say? Like I'm over polished. I'm being, I'm being. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think whether you're live or whether you're a podcast, um, selling forward is always a clue, right? You selling have forward? to sell forward. What does yeah, that mean? So look, Hey, today on the show, we're going to be talking to Kate Bradley Churnus about lately. AI. AI is amazing. Lately is brilliant. This is what you're going to learn today. Bang. Right. And then halfway through, you might be drew, you know, dropping your energy level, and you know you've, you've had a conversation, and then you've got to bring the crowd back up with you, right? Mm. That person's got to know, hey, I've just listened to 15, 20 minutes of you two guys talking. Am I going to waste for the rather? Mm. If anybody looks at their podcast and analytics, they will see many people drop off after three quarters of your podcast. Why mm. is that? Because you've probably bored them at that point. You've not given them <laughs> any information, or you've not told them why they should stick around till the end. You know. And so if you think everyone's listening to the end of your podcast, I don't believe your own, you know, BS. You've got right. to give them a reason to get there. Now, your, your, your true fans will stick with you right to the end, and you'll know that. But the majority of people, they get the meat at the beginning, they get a little bit of flab in the middle, and they're probably going, oh, it's probably rubbish at the end, so I'll just drop off now. I and, love and so flabby. It's <laughs> such a good word. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> But so, so for me, I, you know, I think it's it's all about resetting the podcast 15 mm. minutes in, reset it again. So thanks. That was great. Now, in the next section, we're going to be talking about X. In the last section, we'll talk about Y. But right now, we're going to be talking about Z, right? Same on radio. You have to do exactly the same. Yeah. So, OK, by the way, this is a term you'll hear on Clubhouse a lot. Um, the moderators are saying we're going to reset the room. It's a it's a it's a phrase. And um, so what they're doing is they're reminding you of what the theme is and then introducing people. Um, just I just wanted to pass that on in case people have heard it. But what I like about selling forward is that you're saying is two things. Number one, um, it's not the onus of the guest. I mean, they hopefully you picked an entertaining guest, but it's really on you to, to carry that conversation forward. Um, and you can pre-plan the selling forward, right? So you can write out 
cues for yourself, notes of what to say and when, and you can find, I used to do this in radio, like for example, um, if I was going to pre-sell something and I had to do it 10 times over the course of four hours, I didn't want to do it the same each time because that sounds boring, <laughs> turn off. And so I would write it out different ways. So I had at least something to remind me and then like a, a different, like a twist on it too. So is that something you do? Do you have it planned? You know, when you're going to sell what in the show? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's so much on the time thing. So I don't, uh, so for the radio, I have something called a clock sheet. So on a clock sheet, I have to have that, which tells me at X minutes past the hour, the ads are going to kick in, Y minutes past the hour, and the news will kick in. So that's a pretty structured show that you have to have. So podcasting doesn't have to have the same structure, but when I interview guests, because I want to find out more about them, I, my, my structure is pretty simple, present, past, future. Tell me what you're up to now. Tell me how you got here and tell me what you're going to do next. And that's pretty simple for me. And it's simple for the guests to, to, to think about in advance. And when I pre-show them, it's that's what I say I'm going to do. So we start off with, you know, hey, lovely to meet you. I do the bio intro like you just did. And then it's like, let you tell me what you're up to now. That generally brings in lots of questions. Obviously, I've done my research, so I know exactly what you're talking about. But, you know, if I was interviewing Kate and I have done, you know, it would be tell me all about Lately Don't I? But, hey, Kate, tell me about your radio life, right? And then last thing is, Kate, tell me what's going to happen next with Lately or maybe not with Lately, but what's going to happen with you, right? And and that should give us and the listener, hopefully, an interesting story, but a guide to where we're taking the whole podcast. What, so I like, by the way, a couple of things, which is the research. It's, I always really appreciate it when someone spends the time and I'm always impressed because that takes time um, to literally just, you know, if someone, when I, if I tell someone that I was a rock and roll DJ during the show and they're surprised, <laughs> I'm always a little surprised that they don't know that, you know, um, but, but so, and especially when you do, you do a lot of interviews um, on, on this side, um, on both sides, right? But as the mm -hmm. guest and the host, it's very refreshing when people take the time to ask you rare questions you know, um, what I like about the question of what are you doing next is um, the, if you've done a good job of choosing the right guests and asking the right questions, the incentive for the listener is there to keep, to keep listening because they know that's coming as, especially if it's part of your format, you know, yeah. so it's really smart um, as well. So we've got a question from, and feel free to to ad lib or comment on any more of that. We've got a question from Nisha. She wants to know about creating a new podcast um, that meets, meets an unmet need and, and how to um, start re researching before that. So I'm guessing like, um, you know, pinging the idea off of other people, that kind of research is, my, is what I think she's asking. Uh, I, I'm confused by the unmet need because um, mm. the point is, I think it, it, every podcast has an audience. Um, whether it's the long tail audience or, or the top of the tail, sorry, the top of the body. Um, I always believe that a podcast should be something that you have a passion about. I mean, one of the biggest challenges for all podcasters is not starting, is actually finishing. Um, mm. it, it, you can get to... What do you mean the, finishing, uh, like publishing or, you know, mean like stopping? Well, stopping because most podcasts will get to seven shows and then drop off. They'll go, oh, no one's listening to me. I can't be bothered anymore. Or... Oh. I've only got three people listening. If you haven't got a passion for the topic you're doing and it's it's genuine, then it will come through eventually. Um, you and I have done over 100 podcasts. And um, yeah, after you get to your 100, it, it does become harder to edit and finish stuff and get out if you haven't got the passion. So um, I think you've got to start off with finding a need for for the podcast is there a market now if you're asking is there an unmet need i'd, I'd just ask you mm -hmm. if you could put in the chat what you mean by that but um fundamentally i think you have to have a, a desire a need uh, of what you want to talk about because that will come across if you if you're talking about something you have no knowledge in um and you just want to learn that topic maybe that's fine but if you've got no knowledge and you want to come across as passionate it'll come out that you aren't knowledgeable and people will see through it pretty quickly yeah i think so and nisha chimed in she said um she says the topic would be about solutions to climate change and her investor would be grant makers and investors and i just wanted to 
uh, or the audience would be great American investors. And, and I want you to talk about that um, if you have any suggestions. But I, as you were talking, I thought the longevity of a topic is has to be key to the podcast itself, right? This is why I haven't started a clubhouse, by the way, is because I don't want to think of a new idea each week, frankly. I don't want to book any talent either. And um, like with David Allison, we have 56 values to talk about. So we've got shows for the next five years, <laughs> one show a month, right? Um, so having that uh, vast, you know, range that can, can go with any subject, that's, that's going to be a hard one, you know? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think Clubhouse, personally, if you ask me, is a waste of time. Um, yeah, I agree. Um, uh, you know, I'm listening to people spending, uh, I, I dip in and dip out occasionally. I just got, because I get notifications and a couple of interesting people appear, but, yeah. and then I listen to the, the room for a, for a few minutes and I leave generally. I mean, you know, I've got some good friends on there who are talking, but they're doing eight hours a day and I'm going, and you've made what? How much money? Zero. And, and and that conversation has not been recorded, so it's wasted. So yeah, I think a agree. lot of people I think a lot of people are gaining serendipity through network communications and I like that. That's no problem. I think the tech's great in terms of um, you know, it's so simple to use. And maybe when they bring monetization and subscription and other tools in, maybe there'll be a value add to doing it. But, you know, Cara Swisher said it beautifully this week. Why would I paint someone else's fence for free? And, you know, <laughs> and, and fundamentally, she, you know, that's how she sees it. She's giving Mark Andreessen airtime if she's on there, you know, spending time t talking right. to other people and bringing an audience for free for Mark Andreessen and Paul to make a billion dollar valuation on a company, right? So mm -hmm. um, if we haven't learned anything by now, you know, on social media, you are the product if you don't pay for it. So... Fundamentally, if you're the product generating the value and getting no return, well, good luck for you, but I'm not going to do that game anymore. Yeah, here, here. <laughs> um, I feel all the same things. And, and especially, well, I mean, we, we, I think we could talk about pod, um, Clubhouse for, for the whole time, actually. But um, it is amazing to me that people are willing, people are very interested in listening and, and being this is not the right, not peeping Tom is not the right word, but being the fly in the wall, that mm -hmm. seems to be the biggest draw right now. Um, and I, it's interesting if it's about COVID or whatever. I mean, to us, this is radio all over again, but you can't, mm. you can't take something away from it. Right. You know? Um, so what I, what, what I think it was James here said, he, he talked about ongoing narrative, which I think ties into this because I can't find an ongoing narrative in clubhouse yet. Right. So there's no, that, that consistency is missing for me. Right. There, um, are, there are a few rooms that, you know, there's one called the startup room in here, you know, which is a bunch of UK entrepreneurs mm -hmm. talking about startup challenge and they do a weekly show. Okay. I get it. Um, let's see if they do to the hundredth show they've done. Seven, right. Right. Yeah. Let's see if yeah. they've got, because they, they, you know, by the 10th show, they'll realize they're not getting any value back. The same people are turning up each week. They're talking about the same sort of things. They're That's not that advertising. They're not making money. So they're giving away their time. Well, let's see if they do 100 shows. And if they do, then I'll eat my hat. But other than that, I doubt yeah. it. Now, somebody described Clubhouse really well, and we should get off it in a second, but somebody described Clubhouse really well as social radio, right? So it's imagine like having a, a radio station with a tuner and you're going all through the dials, FM and DAB and whatever, and back in AM, whatever you want. And you might find the music station you want or the chat show you want, right? And that's fine. Well, that's what you're doing in Clubhouse. You're trying to find right. the room and maybe you do find a room that's great and good luck and you just have it as social radio. And I have nothing against it, but I myself will not be investing hours of my time trying to get this follow account to make myself feel popular. Um, <laughs> And, and sitting there giving time to a service that I'm generating no value from. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's just me. People are, are agreeing here. So it's interesting. So, and Nisha, by the way, I just want to touch on this um, and, and then to switch off Clubhouse. Um, so she says, I had, hate the sound of my own voice. So let's talk about some voice tips. Um, I have I have a bunch and I'm sure you do. So, so um, what do you warm up before you get on the air? For example, oh, I sing. Yes, no. You do? Have you ever heard me? No. <laughs> I, do, I do. I do. I go away and just start talking. Um, you do need to warm your voice up. You do. Um, you do. Yeah. It, it, it's it's like anything. If you go cold on a car, you know, a car needs to warm up. It's the same thing. Um, no, I don't sing, but um, I uh, I would probably, if you're a good singer, go and do something like that. Um, 
In terms of your voice, everyone hates their voice, by the way, Nisha. It, it, it's that first initial hearing your own voice back. You go, oh, God, is that how I really sound? Because uh, you've got a you've got a different voice in your head to the one that actually comes out. Um, and then, yes, a bathroom singer, go for it. Um, but, but fundamentally, um, you do actually get used to your voice and... It, it's who you are. Just be authentic. It doesn't matter what you sound like. It's it's what comes out that matters. So I do warm ups. Um, I do the um, alphabet. So I say it out loud, very pronounced. So A B C D. You know that's what I do. And then I always do a motorboat. <laughs> right. Um, and I do this every time I crack the mic. And sometimes even before just meeting regular meetings. You know if I'm, I'm especially nervous or something. But you do need to do that warm up. Um, so that you're not tripping over. And the other thing that I do is I um, air check a lot, right? So air check is just for those of you who haven't done regular radio, it's just the act of recording your show, or if you're on a guest show, listening to the recording back and making notes for yourself about how to do a better job every single time, right? And I, I'm anal, I, I air check everything. Every time someone records me, I listen back to it and make notes, you know, do you? Yeah, I know. I think you have to. Yeah. You, you, you'll never improve otherwise. And as I said, when I first started on radio, I used to say I'm an R, and I I realised how bad that I was. You know, um, that's mm. just because you're brain farting. You know, you're having to think about what to say next, and that's partly because you probably haven't prepared properly, or you're just in that mode where you're thinking, I've got to say something now, and I can't think of what to say, so I'm just going to go um, um, and it's horrible. It's just horrible when you do it. It is. I mean, you lose it, though. I mean, once you hear it, you get that that cringe factor you mentioned before. Like, there's nothing like listening to yourself to cringe and improve. And I actually, I have Lauren and, and Kristen and Ankit and Chris all do that to their demos. So when they're giving demos uh, to our customers, go back and play and listen to yourself and critique yourself. Um, one of the things that you can do, by the way, Nisha and anyone else, is when you're talking when you're public speaking all the time, which many of us now do, whether we realize it or not, just on Zoom calls, you know, um, people talk a lot about how you look, <laughs> but how you sound is also very important, right? Not just the technological of having the good mic. Lot, there's lots of shows talking about this. Um, but for me, I think a lot about space, you know, so I just talked a lot. This is a show where I'm supposed to be interviewing you. I'm, I need to back off right now. <laughs> this is my thought to myself. And like, let you chime in and say, oh, yeah, I do this, right? That's one thing. Yeah, I think I think a good show, I, I think a good show is, a, is, yeah, when I'm interviewing people, my style is to let the person speak that's my guest. That's, that's what I like to do. Uh, I don't like to talk over my guest. A lot of people want to jump in over their guests. I don't think that's a great technique, personally but each their own. Um, and I prefer to just, I always say, look, everybody I invite, I think has got a great story to tell. So let's let them tell that story. Right. Mm -hmm. And don't, and, and have some great questions because you've done your research and you know that you're going to do it. I mean, I had a guy on my show, Drew Ellis, right. And he told the most amazing, one of my favorite stories. He used to do the, the artwork cover for Pink Floyd's albums. Oh my God. And, and he got flown out because in the days when there wasn't the internet, he got flown out to Canada to a hangar um, to show the latest cover art that he'd done for the latest Pink Floyd album. And they were rehearsing for going on tour. So they said to True, hey, well, what are you doing? He said, nothing. I'm about to get on the flight to go home. They said, don't bother. Stay overnight. We're about to do a concert run through. So you might as well sit in the middle and listen to it. So he had a private concert with Pink Floyd. Amazing. Now, what a story that is, right? And, and his other great story was he he was he worked in a studio where basically upstairs was a recording studio and he was downstairs doing the art graphic work and there was his band had turned up that he'd hadn't heard of and all he could hear was the beginning of this drum beat and I can't do the drum beat and it was the beginning of Blue Order New Monday oh my like, god you know, and he <laughs> yeah. said, he was shouting he was shouting upstairs going shut up up with you because <laughs> they kept repeating that entry yeah, driving for Blue crazy. And, and later on of course he realized what a classic entry that is you know it's like it's like telling phil collins from in the air tonight would you mind not doing the drums <laughs> you know and so drew had some great stories and my point is i think everybody has great stories and i just think if you just let people tell their stories um, and and so long as you guide them 
I think it comes across. That's one thing, by the way, that you just did that I've learned from Terry Gross. Um, so if you had if you had talked about Drew and then but didn't tell the story, he had great stories, but he used to always tell them like this or whatever. You went on, you went on. I would stop you and say, "Wait, what was the story?" Um, and th- you know that's something I'm surprised that interviewers sometimes don't do is they don't actually imagine what the listeners are thinking like what's the question that the listener is probably like oh my god is even if especially if you've heard the story before if you if you've had a pre-chat with somebody which is by the way like so i personally don't like to have a a pre-chat before i'm interviewed because i feel like it it can blow the uh magic you know sometimes Mm -hmm. Um, well I've, i've often said some of the best stuff uh, I had a, a wonderful interview with a, a woman who does football commentary, soccer commentary in the UK, oh, yeah. Lindsay Hooper. Lovely, lovely lady. She told me some of the best stuff off air. <laughs> and we got on air. I was going, Lindsay, I should have hit record before yeah, we did this. Yeah. You know, she's, she comes out, she tells me that, you know, that she's in a lesbian relationship that she, nobody knows about yet. And I'm going, I wanted to record this. But she goes, you can't use that anymore. I'm going, what? <laughs> Oh, yeah. So now I always hit record even in the pre-record just in case we get the good stuff. That's so smart. Yeah. Um, And I know we're almost over, but I just want to make sure we get we get in any other, you know, killer tips here. Um, So so pre pre asking like so one thing I've noticed people do, too, is they'll email me questions and then want me to type out the answers before the the thing. And and I find that annoying. (laughs) I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Just don't do it. I mean it's not the way it doesn't flow naturally um i mean in terms of okay if we're if we're running out of time let me give you a couple, couple oh, that's of okay it's my show we can go as long as we want <laughs> okay but um, okay so look structure re, re, um you know I, I talk about it you know you, you've got to have rehearse in terms of research everything right get it get it right make make the time useful do the show have a structure to the show post show edit it edit 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 make it um you know worthwhile for the listener promote the show now of course i use lately.ai but that's not a plug for lately but i do believe that there's a couple of ways to do it so first and foremost create audiograms produce snippets Uh, not everyone's going to come and listen to you you know yes if you've got a good number of people who are downloading your show each week and your podcast numbers are going up brilliant right but also you want to get new people to come and listen to your show. And the only way they're going to do that is across social media. So you've got Mm. to drop little two minute snippets. Two minutes is all you need because yes, you can do 10 minutes on uh, LinkedIn. You can do a full episode if you want on Facebook, but Twitter only allows two minutes. So why create three different audiograms? So I create one audiogram, two minute snippets. Um, I use a tool called headliner.app to create my like cover so I'll use Descript to edit my podcast and, and clean it up. I'll use um, Headliner to create the cover for the MP3. It turns it into an MP4. So strangely, Facebook doesn't allow you to upload an MP3, but it does allow you to upload an MP4. Don't get it? Don't know why. Ask Mr. Zuckerberg. And, um, <laughs> you know, and then recently with Podland and certainly with our sponsor, Buzzsprout, who, I'm, um, who I love, um, I'm using chapters uh, to try and give structure back to my podcast. But I, mm. again, I think, you know, it's by permission that someone's listening to you, at least give them some structure to it. So I flag up the key points in, in chapters. Um, I am adding transcriptions. I, I'm not editing the transcription. So Descript gives me a transcription with labels for the speakers. And I chuck that straight in. I don't have time to edit that. And that's maybe slightly uh, lazy, but... Um, I'm not sure that people are going to read my whole transcription. They're just going to look at snippets of it. It's Mm. more for Google and SEO than it is for the actual listener of a podcast. You're there to listen to it. You're not there to read it. So uh, I'm not going to go mad on it. Um, And the last bit, I'm working with Adam Curry uh, and Dave Jones at the moment on Podcast 2.0, so the new namespace. Uh, And that's pretty cool. So some of the stuff that's coming down... What do you mean the new namespace? Sorry. Oh, okay. So, uh, Sam, are you doing everything yourself? Sabine, sadly, yes, because I don't trust people to edit. And James, who's on this call in the audience, is a wonderful editor and producer. If you need somebody, I'd recommend James. But uh, I haven't 
got the trust. I'm just too much of a perfectionist in my own stuff to trust someone else to do my editing for me. But that's that's and promoting. That's just me. Um, but yeah, a lot of people do outsource that. But going back to the namespace. So when um, when podcasting was first created out of RSS with the enclosure by Dave Widener and Adam Curry, the namespace is just the tags with an XML structure. So, you know, author, uh, podcast enclosure, date, time. And so Apple and, and others never did anything for 10 years with podcasting. It sort of stuck itself in the mud, you know, nothing ever seemed to evolve. And so about a, six to eight months ago, Adam Curry with Dave Jones said, look, let's update this thing. Let's refresh it a bit. And so what you've begun to see, it's called podcastindex.org. You can go there now and look up the namespace. It's a bunch of extra tags that are being added. So we talked about chapters earlier. We talked about transcriptions, but things like sponsors are going to be added, things like multiple oh, enclosures. Okay. So let's say you want to have a, a 192 stereo high quality version of your podcast. That's great for the Western world. But if you're in India or Africa or somewhere else mm. in the third world, I, can't, I don't even call that in the third world anymore. I don't know what we're supposed to call it. So that's offensive. So apologies. But whatever, you, whatever it is where you've got poor broadband connection and mm. you have to pay for it still, then that could be $4, $4 $5 to download your podcast because it's such a high quality. So one of the examples is they're creating multiple enclosures. So you might have a 32-bit and a 192-bit in the same download. Got it. Um, yeah. And then things like adding location, adding uh, imagery around it, adding authors and guests. So there's a whole bunch. Think of it as a metadata layer sure. on top of okay. podcasting. And that's what the namespace is. And I think what that's going to do, There's we interviewed a company last week called Maps FM. And again, they're using the location tag. And what's great about that is then suddenly you might be going to Paris, right? And having a wonderful time. Remember, you can travel eventually. And, you know, Mr. Chernis goes, hey, Kate, you've been so lovely. That million dollars, I'm <laughs> taking you to Paris. For, get Honolulu. We're going, baby. And anyway, you're there and you're thinking, wow, I don't know anything about Paris. How do I do that? He's listening. He knows. He knows. It's Valentine's Day. The secret will be out soon. Anyway, long story short, you get to Paris and you're at the Louvre and you think, hey, I wonder if there's a podcast about the Louvre or about the Eiffel Tower. With the location tag now, you can just simply do a search oh, on somebody like okay. Maps of Femme and a podcast, not about where it was recorded, but about where it's talking about the location. Got it. Yeah. And then you go, yeah, OK, I'm going to stick something in my ears and I'm going to walk around the Eiffel Tower. Somebody's going to tell me all about it. And, and that's great. So this is advanced um the technical side, which is so important. And it's, I think, you know, people don't realize that just having a podcast is not only about the, the guest and the questions and just turning on Zoom or StreamYard or wherever it is, but it's the planning and after effects of how your podcast will get multiple listens across, you know, all the spaces. So a real science to that, you know, um, as you were say, talking, by the way, I just wanted to, to everybody, and we do need to wrap up, um, to notice how um, his alliteration, you see how good Sam is when he talks? Like you can really feel and hear every single consonant, which is part of the art as well, right? To make sure, and especially, by the way, you have to, to us an accent, you know? and But you're very easy to understand. Whereas um, in audio only, I find that can be a challenge for a lot of listeners, you know, so that um, that alliteration, the enunciation is incredibly important to the well, skills. I like to say I come from Royal Berkshire. It's where the Queen lives. And obviously we invented English here. We transported it across to you, you know, yes. and the colonies did bastardize it a little bit. You know, you took out the U's. And what what is a ragano? I still don't know. And <laughs> please, you know. And an herb has got an H on the front. Why do you drop it? I mean, there's things that I just want to ask you guys. What were you thinking? I know. But other than that, yes, we do. We do think that I think clear pronunciation, you're right. Um, and I'm probably talking too fast now because I know the show is wrapping, but I wouldn't talk this fast normally. Mm. Uh, I would slow my voice back down a little bit. Um, and Good make tip. It much, uh, clearer because I'm passionate about podcasting. I'm passionate about technology. I love this stuff. And... Mm. But I equally, I've got to pull myself back down to a pace that will bring the audience with me and I don't lose them. 
did you guys all hear that, by the way? So he was talking fast. You heard him slow it down in real time and he created pause there. And, and what that did for me was I, I was feeling my ears like leaning forward. There was some, there, he, you, you created suspense in just those seconds, Sam, literally, right? So like this, all these little nuances you guys go into, you, I mean, you can try it on the phone. <laughs> when you're getting a loan from your bank, for example, <laughs> right? Um, or on with customer service. They, this, these little tactics can be used um, you know, everywhere. The, the last one I wanna point out before we do say goodbye is the smile, right? So um, smiling truly makes your voice sound different and it can denote excitement, warmth, trust, all the things. I know that you know this well, Sam, um, but there's, I could read you, you know, anything here without uh, where this is my favorite here i'm going to read this smileless this certificate is issued for reward purposes and is a duplicate this certificate is issued for reward purposes and is a duplicate all he did was smile right big difference um go ahead i, I was going to say i think if you're not genuine and you're not honest uh and you you will come across i mean people we are very much more attuned to I, I guess the sound of fakeness we are we we can learn and listen you know if somebody's trying to sell you it we we can tell what a sell is we can we can hear that in in people's voices yeah and it, it goes back to the earlier comment from Nisha. you know <clears throat> when you start a podcast do it with passion do it because you you really care about the subject and you so you know there's a brilliant book by simon sinek you know find your why i love his book uh, find your purpose and you know um Mine's slightly cheesy, but I don't care, which is to share my platform so others can share their voice. And I, I think that for me is when I go into everything I do in audio, that's why I do it. Because I want to find the interesting person with the interesting story that I think would want to be told. And that's when I look for guests. Yes, mine's with a technology background, but, but fundamentally they still have a great story. That's not all about bits, bites and bobs. It's about the person. Yeah, I love it. Um, that's obviously, I, I feel that way about you. So, um, and you do that you. super well. Yeah, which is why we're friends. Sam's name is easy to spell. So that means he's easy to find and it's unique. It's S-A-M-S-E-T-H-I and you're in all the places, LinkedIn and Twitter, et cetera. Um, feel free to, I like it when people, after I'm a guest in a show, if they find me on LinkedIn, they say, hey, I heard you. Um, it's a really nice way to connect with somebody. So I would advise you guys to do that. Um, and one of my teammates can maybe drop your link in the chat. But um, Sam, we love you. I found this love really helpful. Back. Yeah. Um, hopefully you guys did as well. Um, and if you have other questions, um, let me know. We can try to funnel them Sam's way, et cetera. Um, two quick things before we go. And thanks for letting me go long today. Sorry, but I thought this was important because so many of you are podcasters. Um, we have LinkedIn video now available so we can actually push videos to linkedin company pages on lately that's been an integration that we haven't had because we were small fry and then they let it open to everybody oh freaking hooray this is huge um so that's exciting and then um i don't know what's happening next week lauren but we'll do something like this is it lately 101 i think so oh no it's david allison great so value graphics will will release another commanding word that can literally will literally change the way you sell our market to anybody at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern. So thank you, Sam. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for your time. Love you. Bye.